give some guidance to the leaders in our country and all the countries to make some good decisions and try to quell this, this strike that's going on in the world. We pray for the family of Irene Gidry. We pray for the Dave family with their, their health issues. We pray, pray for every, everyone in Florida and all the other. The whole country as those numbers go up and remind people to, to practice safe safety. We pray for Dolly and Bill as they struggle through their, the issues they're having. We pray, pray for Blaine and Cavill as he has his re, knee replacement tomorrow. And we pray for the new baby that Ms. Corners has on the way, that she'll be safe and healthy and a blessing to the family. And we pray for all this in your name. Amen. Amen.
Righteousness and justice are the foundation of the throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those who have learned to acquaint you, who walk in the light of the presence of the Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They exalt in your righteousness. For you are their glory and strength, and by your favor you exalt out the horn. Indeed, our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel, the reading of God's Holy Word. We have in here the name of the of, uh, piece that Matthew put together is here our call, but it's actually called God Calling Yet.
responsibly and share them with the world. This is his message to us in Jesus Christ. So in that, let us uh, let us pray and enter the Lord's Prayer. And Matthew's going to play the doxology, and after he plays it, we'll read it. So let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all of what you have given us in life. We see the cycle of life go through our hands and in our hearts. We see as people get older and they're, and they're parting of wisdom to us. And we see the new life come forth and the expected life that we hope for and pray for. Lord, help us to use our gifts to nurture each other and to love each other and to bring each other closer to you. For we know that we are nothing without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. to impurity, 
and to ever-increasing wickedness. So now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things resulted in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness. And the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And then from Matthew, the Gospel from the 10th chapter, again we're coming through uh, after the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus is still continuing to, uh, to teach uh, his disciples. And this is after he sent out the disciples to go in to teach the word to the people of Jerusalem, uh, to, the, uh, to the Hebrews. And he tells them not to take anything with them, but to take the word. So he, this message continues on in that vein. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is righteous uh, because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth. He will certainly not lose his reward. The word of the Lord. Pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We have an interesting two pieces of scripture this morning. The one from Jeremiah was just a short glimpse into a story about Hananiah and Jeremiah. That story, if it was staged on Broadway or in an opera house, would probably be standing room only. I mean, this is a story of legend. It has all the bells and whistles of everything that you can imagine of a tree. And we need to understand it a little bit better because at first glance we could just kind of go over it and, you know, it sounds kind of okay. But when you get into it, oh my gosh, it sounds like something that could be written for today. Jerusalem wasn't this quaint little town. It was this mighty, mighty city. It took up several different mountain tops and this area around it. The folks had built themselves a pretty decent life. The folks there in Jerusalem, they got their economy. I brought this in. Olive wood. Isn't that beautiful? Olives were a big thing. The olive oil that was traded throughout the Mediterranean, olives themselves for eating, the wood for making all kinds of things. Also, the area around Jerusalem was called the Fertile Crescent. And that meant that it was like our breadbasket of the United States, the central part of the state where anything can grow, corn, barley, you know, all the different kinds of food. And so there was all this food that could be grown around Jerusalem. And then there were the vineyards. You always hear, you know, Jesus talking about the vineyards and uh, all the different stories about the vineyards. Well, vineyards produce a lot of wine, a lot of fruit. So when you start thinking about all the economy that Jerusalem had, this was a powerful, powerful place. 
They had a huge economy based on the oil and all the things that came from olives. They had all the economy that came from all the agriculture. They had all the economy that came from the wine. And again, like any good economy, what happens? You have a trade. You've got trading throughout the Mediterranean area. And just like our port cities, you know, throughout the country, we have things coming and going, right? And you have a lot of different diverse people coming in, going out. And so we know, you know, we've, we've heard all the different stories about the diversity in the area. So here Jerusalem was doing so well. The people were getting so comfortable because they had a lot of wealth. That wealth made them comfortable. What happens sometimes when we get comfortable? We kind of take things for granted. We kind of lay back and we don't want to give up any of those comforts. So we start doing things to protect our wealth, to protect our comfort, to protect who it is that we want to be protected. And we want the life better for the next generation. But in that, what happens a lot of times? We start forgetting about what it is and who it is that we're supposed to be serving. We start serving the economy, we start serving ourselves, we start serving our own comfort, and we forget about who it is we're supposed to be serving. And so consequently, here's Jerusalem with all this wealth and power, and you've got other countries going, ooh, I like that. I think I want to come in and take over. So Babylon came in and wanted to destroy Jerusalem to be able to take all that wealth. And guess what? Hananiah and Jeremiah were prophets at the same time. And Jeremiah before the fall of Jerusalem, was going around saying, folks, wake up. And I can see um, Miss Shirley over there uh, quoting all the Jeremiah's and Jeremiah. She loved Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, okay, come on, people, get it right. You've become too comfortable in what you are and you forgot about serving God. You forgot about who you are and what you are and how you have used or abused other people for your own comfort. And so he tried to shake them up. The king didn't like that because the king was really comfortable. And so the king said, silence the guy. And even when he went out to read from scrolls to put some public notice out, the king had somebody going behind him and tearing those down. He was public enemy number one. Nobody wanted to have Jeremiah around. No one. But yet God said, continue to go out. And remember the scripture from a couple weeks ago when Jeremiah was saying, why God did you entice me to you know, do your work and now I'm being persecuted? So here's Jeremiah being faithful and yet being persecuted. And here comes along uh, Hananiah. Hananiah would be what you call maybe a prosperity gospel person. And he said, don't worry folks, take it easy, just resist, in a two years everything's going to be fine. It's going to be peaceful. It's going to be okay. Hananiah was given accolades by the king. He said, go out there, Hananiah. Get those folks wrapped up. It's okay. We're going to be good. And Jeremiah is still walking around saying, no, folks. We have got to repent and change our ways and be different. So he put this gigantic, huge yoke on him. This wooden yoke. He walked around the city with this wooden yoke up and down through the city and would preach about forgiveness and changing
to the ways in which Jerusalem was and going back to asking God for forgiveness and changing the way in which Jerusalem had turned its back on God. And Hananiah went up to Jeremiah, took that note off, and broke it. And he said, this is Jeremiah. Don't listen to him. And so what happened? Rich folks, with their money, spread out, went out, it was about 587 BC, left the city, took their wealth with them, hoping to save it. Some of the folks who were too old, too poor, just couldn't make it, stayed in the city. Babylon came in, crushed everything. The temple was destroyed, and everything was in ruins. And that's when Jeremiah said his famous thing. The remnant, build your houses, grow your gardens. Even in the midst of all this ruin, be faithful. And so the remnant built houses out of scraps. You can imagine if a whole city was in rubble, uh, you can imagine oh, it, because you've been through hurricanes, you've seen what it does, you've seen tornadoes. Out of that rubble, because the people had nothing, the ones who were the remnants ones who were conquered by the Babylonians. They were fearful for their lives, and yet they were picking up scraps of stone, wood, whatever they could salvage, building their houses, maybe making their, you know, the rock structure, put dirt back in to build a garden so that they could feed themselves, their families, and they could feed others. And so we go to that scripture of Matthew. Matthew sends his disciples out in very much the same kind of condition. The people have become complacent. They're, some of them are buddies with the Roman Empire. They like their position. They don't want to rock the boat. But Jesus sends out his disciples and says, go to your own people. You know, go to, you know, go to your own people. Not the not Samaritans or the Gentiles, but go to our own house. And if people welcome you, go in and give them the word. They were not to take anything with them. Remember, they didn't take any. Uh, clothes, they didn't take any money, they didn't take anything other than the word of God with them. So they looked like a pretty ragtag group of disciples going out to Jesus. They weren't some rich person that you could welcome into your house and go, wow, look who I had visiting me. These were, looked like homeless people on the street. And Jesus said, if they welcome you in, Give them the word, and they will receive it, and they will be blessed. Jeremiah, back at the time when that tusk was going with Hananiah, Jeremiah was basically saying the same kind of thing. Build those houses, have that garden, so that you can offer a radical kind of hospitality a radical understanding of bringing in the people. Who else was going to welcome back the people but those remnants of people who stayed behind and rebuilt those houses and, and gardens? They were the ones who were going to carry the faith. They were the ones who were going to welcome back in as the exiles came back home with nothing because they were stripped of all their wealth everything they had. And yet, here was that faithful remnant that was able to welcome them back. So Jesus was saying that there is that faithful remnant. And that faithful remnant is going to open the doors and give hospitality 
and share the gospel message of love and sharing and caring. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And so we need to remember that sometimes we, like the people of Jerusalem at the time, we live in a powerful country. We sometimes get complacent. We sometimes get very comfortable. We sometimes want to protect what we have and we forget about who it is we are, that we are our Lord and Savior's children. We are to practice that undeniably open hospitality, to share the gospel, to give of ourselves, and to follow his word as Jeremiah and Jesus and all the prophets before Jesus had showed us to do things to those who, like Hananiah, wanted to just cajole us into comfort and say, it's okay. Folks, sometimes it's not okay. And we have to be pushed from the center of where we are to understand that we cannot get comfortable in our own selves. As it says in Romans, we get selfish and sinful in our own sin, in our own skin. We need to be moved from our complacency and our comfortableness to the edge where we open our hearts, open our hands, open our minds to do God's will now and always. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us together and I lost